right. the, this dope-filled world right. and get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right, that's exactly the And it, it's deadly. And, and it works on your heart. It really does. So I, anyway, I, I wanted to make that clear. So Why have you said that you won't fly commercial? You said that it's like getting into a tube with a bunch of demons. Why do you think well, that? No, no. If I flew commercial, I'd have to stop 65% of what I'm doing. That's really the main. Isn't it true that you want to fly commercial so that you can fly in luxury? How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen. Thank you, Lord. Help me. Just let me, let me pray. Just well, let me, let me just ask you a really simple question. A lot of people think it's unbecoming for a preacher to live a life of luxury and to fly around in private jets. What's your response to that? Very simple. It takes a lot of money to do what we do. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Copeland was conducted last month, but we played it for you just now so that you can get a sense of who he is. Because just this week we learned that Kenneth Copeland signed his name to a list of conservative evangelical leaders calling for today to be a national day of prayer for Donald Trump. And you know who's leading this call to prayer? Here he is, this guy, Franklin Graham who sees absolutely nothing wrong with Donald Trump's immoral and unethical behavior. And joining me now, Frank Schaefer, a religious reform activist and author of Why I Am an Atheist Who Believes in God. And Jonathan Capehart is back with me as well. Um, so Frank, I'll go with you first. Kenneth Copeland bought Tyler Perry's luxury plane because he said he can't fly commercial because of demons on the plane. Um, he doesn't seem to be apologetic about living a very luxurious lifestyle uh, on the backs of the people who donate in his churches. So he now is the guy that is part of leading this call to prayer with Franklin Graham. Your thoughts? Well, you know, I come from an evangelical background back in the 70s and 80s. I knew these guys. I grew up with Franklin Graham. He used to visit our house. So we go way back. And you have to look at Franklin and Copeland and these other people as opportunists who are out for power, out for money, and they are the same sort of con artists when it gets to their basic genetic structure as the President of the United States. They understand each other. So when you look at what Franklin is doing, this is a fundraising opportunity for him, period. These, quote, days of prayer are nothing more than that. And the same thing with Copeland. They are about the money. They're about the private jets. They are about all these little perks that they have gotten so used to. And that includes a lot of people in the Trump team, including his press secretary. It includes his lawyer. They're all from that same network work of evangelical con artists. And as someone who comes from an evangelical background, the amazing thing is when they also ask Pete Buttigieg to repent, when you look at the quality of his Christianity, if two lines were forming and one looks like religion and the other like a theme park, he's the man with the authentic Christ-like demeanor, the kindness, reaching out, the compassion, the religious tolerance, and the rest of it. So it's a triple irony here. That's where we're at. Religion is a fiasco in America today when it gets to these big buck pol politically connected evangelicals. And this is just the latest manifestation of that. These are flakes. Yeah, I mean, the, the wing, Jonathan, that has, that has Tyler Perry's plane <laughs> because he can't fly commercial. And that is, does seem to be really focused on the luxurious sort of lifestyle of being a, a, a pastor. To conservatives and certainly to ev so-called evangelicals like, um, like Franklin Graham and, um, and all these other folks who are living in the lap of luxury and buying private planes and casting judgment on other on other people's lives. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Frank, you do have, you know, evangelicals of not this sort, you know, people like Bishop William Barber, they've got a big event coming up this Wednesday where they are going to also uh, call the nation to, you know, return to prayer for the moral health of the country. That's happening on Wednesday. Is there uh, inside of the, the sort of world of, of evangelical Christianity, is there a tension between the ones who care about the kids in cages and the ones who just want to, uh, you know, fall at the feet mm -hmm. of Donald Trump, or has the Trumpist version completely subsumed it? 
Well, the fact of the matter is, the evangelical Christians in this country of color and evangelicals who are more progressive unite in not only opposing Donald Trump, but in representing the kind of compassionate Christianity that is revolted by children in cages, is revolted by the overt racism and the call to white nationalism. Sadly, that is not the Trump voter, and I think this brings up a point that needs to be made, even if it's offensive to a lot of people. The evangelical white Christian community that voted for Trump is no longer a Christian community as a block. Now, I'm not talking about every individual, but as a block of voters, they have voted for a man that not only denies the basic teachings of Jesus Christ, they have voted for a man who has turned their former religion into a cult. They no longer see President Trump as a political figure to be judged like other political figures. They're wandering around not only doing days of prayer for him like Franklin Graham, but saying that he has been brought by God to America to save America in order to do everything from recognizing the American embassy in Jerusalem so Jesus can come back to closing down every abortion clinic and making women's choice go back into the 1950s, not even the 1960s and Roe v. Wade in the 70s. This is a program of authentic theocracy that is far more like Trump's friends, the Saudi Arabians, than it is to do with anything traditional about American religion, even back to the Bay State Colony here in Massachusetts, where I'm sitting. Yeah, it, it, it is, a, it is, a, it is a, a watershed moment, I will put it that way, uh, for those of us who grew up in the church. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is a moment. Uh, Frank Schaefer, thank you so much. Jonathan Capehart, thank you both so much. And have a wonderful Sunday.